Hi everybody, welcome back to Speed Source USA. In a past video, we talked about uh, adjusting the camber to maximize the performance of your tires. Today, we're gonna actually show you how to make the adjustments on four different types of suspensions. We'll first cover the strut type suspensions, which is typically something you'll see in most current production cars. And then we'll show a double A-arm suspension as typically you might see in a formula car. And then we'll cover a Mazda Miata. And then finally, we'll go over uh, how you adjust this camber on a uh, NASCAR stock car. This is known as a strut type front suspension and is probably the most common suspension being used in current production cars. And it's made up of a suspension spring here and inside of this tube is a, uh, the shock absorber and the tube is attached to the front spindle which has the brake rotor and the brake caliper and of course the tire and wheel on it. Um, <clears throat> typically these production strut type suspensions, they're, they're, I think the correct term is a McPherson strut, are, are not adjustable for uh, camber and they, the, the top mount of the strut is usually fixed. So in order to be able to adjust it, you have to replace the top mount with a adjustable plate. You can see this plate has slots on it. So as you move the strut left or right in these slots, then what you're doing is you're changing the angle of the tire, which obviously changes the, uh, the camber of the front tire. This is an RX-7 that's had the upper mount for the strut replaced with the adjustable uh, mount. You can see the slots here that allow the <clears throat> top of the strut to be moved in or out. And you'd go through that same procedure that we talked about in the previous video about using a tire parameter to adjust the uh, camber so you have the maximum performance out of your tires. <clears throat> now, if you're using your normal street vehicle for track days and you get the camber adjusted so that it's at the optimum for your track days, you don't probably don't want to leave that uh, at that setting when you drive home because what'll happen is you'll wear out the inside edge of your tires. So what I would suggest you do is <clears throat> put a mark right here on the plate that indicates where the setting is for the track days. And then you'd have another mark here that would be your settings for your street driving. And uh, these are usually pretty easy to adjust. When you're at the track, all you have to do is put a jack underneath the uh, front and just take a little weight off of it. And then these will, these will move pretty easily. The next car we're gonna talk about uh, doing the camber adjustments on is this uh, tube frame kit car. And uh, it's got a double A-arm front suspension, but the way the camber is adjusted is quite a bit different than the last car. This car's uh, suspension has uh, double A-arms. There's one up here and one down below it. And they pivot on what are known as heim joints or rod ends. You can see that uh, there's a series of threads right here that screw into the end of the A-arm. And then as you change, as you screw this rod end in and out, it changes the length of this upper A-arm, which then in turn changes the camber angle of the tire. This is the rear suspension of the same car, and it has four-wheeled independent suspension, so you have to do essentially the same adjustments to the rear as you do to the front. You've got your same rod ends or heim joints here and you'd move these in or out depending on whether or not you're wanting to increase or decrease the negative camber. And one additional thing that this has is what's called a toe link which is what this is because you also have to adjust the uh, toe in or toe out of the rear tire also. This is a Mazda Miata and it has also has a double A arm suspension. You can see the top A arm here and the bottom one is here and it's also known as a coilover suspension. It's got a, the yellow thing here is the shock absorber and then the springs on the top of it. The Miata is a little different than the last car in that the top A arm is actually fixed and doesn't move, is non-adjustable. And the way they change the camber is by adjusting the lower A arm. You'll see on the mounting bolt, you'll see this offset washer, which is called an eccentric. And so what you do is loosen this bolt and then you can rotate that bolt, which then moves the bottom A-arm either in or out. It's a little 
backwards from the top a-arm in that if you want to get more negative camber then you have to move the bottom a-arm out instead of the top a-arm in. We're going to show you how we adjust the camber on our NASCAR stock car. This is the upper a-arm right here and it's attached to the frame through a bracket that's welded onto the top of the frame and there are these through bolts that hold the a-arm on. Between the a-arm and the bracket is a series of shims. There are also different, different thicknesses as well as quantities. So if we want to increase the, the negative camber, what we would want to do is move the upper A-arm in toward the center of the car so we would add shims. If we want to decrease the negative camber, then we take out shims and move the A-arm toward the outside of the car. 